Parliament. We have invited you once again at the headquarters of the Liberian National Police, like we did before the October elections, providing information on the electoral process, our readiness as a joint security. So today we've once again invited you uh, where we're going to provide you information on our preparedness for the November runoff elections, November 14. And so this press conference is going to be delivered by the Minister and Attorney General of the Republic of Liberia, Councillor Frank Musa Dean, and it's going to be backed by heads of joint security institutions, inclusive of the armed forces of Liberia. At this juncture, it is my pleasing duty and honor to welcome the Minister of Justice to present this press conference. Minister, you're welcome. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Members of the fourth estate, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this press conference by the Joint Security of Liberia. We wish to announce that following investigation into the violence which erupted on Friday, September 29, 2023, in Foya, Dofa County, several individuals have been charged with various crimes, ranging from murder, criminal conspiracy to commit murder, criminal mischief, disorderly conduct, rioting, illegal possession of firearms to terroristic threats. They have been duly forwarded to court and are awaiting trial. On a positive note, Liberia has had a very peaceful fourth general and presidential elections since the end of the 14-year civil conflict. This, we believe, is evidence that multi-party democracy is gaining strong roots in Liberia. Respect for our constitution and our elections law was observed by all parties participating in the first round of the elections. We join the international community of election observers to thank the Liberian people for their outstanding participation in the first round of these elections, held under a very peaceful atmosphere. This proves that the Liberian people are convinced and resolved that the only way to determine the leadership of the country is through the democratic process. The government of Liberia remains grateful to its people. Immediately subsequent to the first round of the elections, there was a steady stream of baseless unfounded and alarming stories circulated on social media suggesting imminent bloodshed and disturbances. Inflamed by rumors that there were plans afoot to wreak the awaited results. In addition to this tidal wave of misinformation and disinformation, the Joint Security received reports of some diehard party loyalists and extreme thoughts who had planned to proceed to various talent centers under the guise of protecting their votes. These accounts also indicated that attacks on high-level individuals, public infrastructure, and business houses were highly likely. 
the Joint Security investigated several such controversial assertions, reports, and rumors, and found them to be utterly untrue, leading to the inference that these fake stories and declaration of election results by individuals and groups ahead of the National Elections Commission were designed and geared at creating fear and confusion in the general population and fostering hate and violence. The actions of these individuals and groups go against the concerted efforts of most Liberians to build a better society, a better country, undermine our hard-earned peace and security, and pose a direct challenge to our democracy and our national unity. Given this, the Joint Security condemns in the strongest possible terms all attempts at creating turmoil, anxiety, and violence within the nation. The Joint Security firmly cautions against all acts that have the propensity to fend violence and set into motion actions that threaten Liberia's peace, including the airing of political prejudices that could lead to violent reactions. As Liberians proceed to the polls, on Tuesday, November 14, we as a government remain steadfast in the maintenance of law and order during these crucial and challenging times in our history. We urge people using the social media to issue threats to desist with immediate effect while exercising rule-based citizen journalism. These biases are undermining the peaceful democratic process of our country. The Joint Security will be closely monitoring the social media for individuals making threats. Finally, we urge political parties and individuals to adhere to the following. One, refrain from announcing results ahead of the National Elections Commission. The National Elections Commission is the only entity constitutionally and statutorily authorized to declare and announce election results. Two, refrain from celebrating until the final official results are declared and announced. Three, resolve election grievances peacefully through the legal process in accordance with law. We urge every registered voter to go and vote peacefully. Your security is guaranteed. You and your votes shall be protected. The Joint Security will always exercise restraint, but all unlawful aggressions will be met with reasonable and proportionate force. Well, thank you. So that you've listened to the Attorney General, the Minister of Justice, it is now time that we entertain questions to the Minister of Justice and other members of the Joint Security team, heads of Joint Security team, their family. Yeah, my name is Fabian Kuya and I report for <clears throat> State Radio. I have two questions. This is the first has to do uh, with the closure of the border and the data to win the first round. Will that be the exercise for the runner? And secondly, uh, my next question has to do with uh, the news that we got about the Organian being allegedly arrested for interfering with major matters in the Can you speak on that? Thank you. With respect to the closure of the border, mm -hmm. we refer to the Commissioner General of Immigration. Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> yes, the, the land border will be closed on November 
2014 at the date on October 10th. And the reason being is to avoid claims or counterclaims from political parties of talking non Liberians into Liberia to participate in the upcoming election. So those all land border, only sea and air border will be open for business. The question of the Ghanaian national who was picked up by the Joint Security in River G is the subject of further investigation. Normally, when you come to the country to work, the law requires that you obtain a work permit and uh, the application will punish the Ministry of Labor with uh, information uh, with respect to what you will be doing here. You have no such information. And in these challenging times where the security is on alert, it is only necessary that uh, it be fully investigated. And that investigation is ongoing. Yes. <clears throat> My name is Lincoln G. Peters, and I write for the New Dawn newspaper. <clears throat> Honorable Minister, recently we listened to uh, Mr. Joshua Blahi Allard's general board making. He yeah, established a group calling themselves a rescue soldier, and the group is particularly intended a calling to him to protect the votes of the opposition United party headed by Ambassador Joseph Numangwa. He has made some threatening remarks and he has made some, he has made some threatening remarks and he has also vowed to protect the vote of the Unity Party in an unspecified manner. From the angle of the joint security, does that in any way worry you? The joint security is alive. I don't know whether worry will be the right word, but we are alert and we are watching. We are watching everybody. We are even watching ourselves. So, uh, yes, we took that into consideration. As we said, we are monitoring Facebook and other uh, social media outlets. Yes, that is taken into consideration. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. My name is Ibrahim Sharif, and I report for the Nigerian News Agency. My attention has been going to social media posts from one of the biggest media managers in Nigeria, the WhatsApp or the newspaper. And uh, I'm going to quote directly. He said, I quote, class predations, President William will win the presidency, United Party will reject the NDC results, civil unrest will ensue in Monrovia, leading to violent clashes, vote in Stephen, unquote. As this being brought to your attention? Yes, we are seeing all the posts. And I think, as you said, uh, he prefaces uh, whatever he says by saying prediction, right? So uh, some people are so serious. <laughs> uh, we, we can't have control over that, but we are watching. <laughs> Do we have another? Yes. yes. So my name is Shamil Dumo, I work for the news public trust. Uh, we left the honors time with some news. How many candidates were chanced to vote for the Koya incident? The number is still growing. I think at this time we have more than 15 persons. But uh, the, the number is still growing. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> so um, we will take you and then we'll come. Yes, thank you. I'm Sylvester Chudri, and I work for the Spoon Network. I'm concerned about the uh, Ghanaian national who was recently arrested by you, by the Joint Security, and he has been reported that he is a higher UP anti specialist. The UP has been complaining that um, up to the date, he doesn't know exactly why he was. Uh, invested, and you say that he's going on an investigation. Uh, I understand that before someone is, uh, goes on an investigation, 
there might be a cause. So could you tell the public exactly uh, why is it that the, the Ghanaian national is going through investigation? That's one. Of recent, um, a radio personality from Tudor FM uh, made some allegations at the, uh, the AFL that uh, the chief of staff uh, was um, removing some you know, uh, officers at the AFL. Up to now, we don't know exactly uh, what is the conclusion of that uh, incident or uh, situation. So perhaps if the joint security specifically, if the chief of staff can tell the public, where are we now in terms of that? Thank you so much. So with the chief of staff speak to that minister. Well, I'll just refer you to the same registration. I'll show you came by and retracted it. What more do you want me to say? Thank you, Minister. Well, we have said when one comes to the country to undertake a tax, uh, you are required to obtain a permit. We told you that. So if they saw you driving on the street with all license, is there not reason to pull you over and investigate you? So tell us one that way that send you the question. That is why we are interested. Yes. yes. Thank you. So let's take you. I think we'll come after you. Yes, thank you. My name is Michael Dyer, and I report for Sky FM. A follow up to the question my comrade from Lena asked in the opinion you gave, posed by one of uh, uh, the media outlets, specifically print media. In the operators. Is it a threat to the national security for which a uh, joint security is taking into consideration? So, the my several questions has to do with uh, what's the specific post for mm -hmm. the post of culture for recommendation of social recommendation. Go to the next question. Mm -hmm. Another question has to do with the presence of state security at Vera Puli precinct mm -hmm. of the, the 20 the October 10 elections. We noticed some sort of shortage of police present or security present at various centers for which we have some difficulty in responding to situations. How prepared with the security to deploy people in terms of this format? Okay, thank you. Now to the first question, there is a fine line between free speech and threats that border on a crime. And it is for us to consider whether the pronouncement has elevated to the level that requires the joint security intervention. We also look at the capacity of people. So if somebody came and said, I was going down this building, he has no gasoline, he has nothing in his hand, do you arrest him and incarcerate him? So we also look at capacity. And I can tell you that we are watching. We are watching very keenly. Uh, what is the second question? The problem. The problem. We take we 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 take note of that, and uh, probably uh, the uh, deputy for operations will speak on that. Okay, thank you. Uh, so what we have done after the October election, the Joint Security did an after action review, and we actually uh, decided to address the concern. So we are actually using our reserve officers to amend the screen at those uh, areas that we have identified, where there were more voters and less officers assigned. So we have taken note, and our strategy have been put in place to address that. Yes, so um, let's take him. Yeah, uh, my name is Renzi SD and I write for the Labrador News Agency. Uh, Minister, although, you know, uh, our country allows free speech, but sometimes, you know, this uh, 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 statement people write here on Facebook, sometimes it puts fears in our people. Uh, do you sometimes value people to, you know, want them to stop making some uh, uh, threatening statement that have a problem with honor man and peace and put fear in our people? We do. We invite them. We also expect you to condemn it. What news online you report for, sir? Labrador News Agency. I haven't heard you condemning this. All of you press I expect you to condemn it. Misinformation, disinformation, fake news, 
you will help the society if you also condemn it. If you call these people out. I don't see you doing that. So let's work together. While we are also calling them and investigating them, you also should investigate the uh, veracity of what they are saying, and if it's not true, point them out. You know, uh, when we were growing up, uh, we uh, dealt with our adults in some ways that uh, were very tempting. Sometimes you will see the little child, the neighbor, he opens his mouth and it's going to be a curse, right? He knows that man can beat him, energy, but why do you think he does it? He wants a crisis. Not so? Aha. So we're looking at the capacity of people. Thank you. So, uh, so, so John was. Yeah, the truth of the matter here is that we all have um, free speech and we know that. True. You are asking us if we are inviting these people or if we, if we are investigating them. That's a fact, but we are very, very courteous about going. Because if we go and invite them, you are going to report it that they want to come on the press. Every one of you here will report it. But all of these things are just like the minister said, we are not already condemning it. If we brought those people here today, the very first thing is all of the print the electronic media, the front, the front pages, everything, their pictures will be there, joint security arrested this person, and you'll write your own story. So I just want to caution you to condemn these things. Police yourselves. Okay, yes. Uh, yes. Actually, 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 actually. That's one thing to add. Many of times when these uh, information surface on Facebook and other outlet, we manage to get some of these people. The next thing you hear from them, yeah, chief, this is my account. It was hacked. So how do you prove it whether it was hacked or not? That is a long process that you have to go get specialty to come. So like the minister said, we look at you, you said something. But we want to see whether your 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 operation is 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 going to that procedure where action is being taken. Because like you say, I will point the video down and the next two minutes we show you what we'll continue with gassing it. Then we know that your 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 statement has resulted into action. Then the judge will take this, take take a stand to ensure that that person be arrested. So uh, again, the press have a pivotal role to play in maintaining the peace of this country. To maintain the peace of Liberia is not with only the security. The citizens have their role, the press have a major role. And I'm glad that you guys are flagging it all that. So many statements coming from your own colleague. Like the minister just said, what are you doing to bring your colleague to check me? You people have a union. The press union is here. What are you doing to tell the press union no? We should be keeping the peace. We should not be fighting the other people to make the kind of insinuating statement. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So, no, yes, so that's not just what I want me to please. Let's take him. And I'll come to Fabi Fakir. Yeah, thank you. I mean, my, my concern is still surrounding uh, Director Philip Brown's uh, statement. In recent time, like last year, uh, we brought the police inviting one tattoo from the ANC when he was in, 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 in Lima. He made a statement where the police consider as uh, spurring false who he was invited to also uh, give an answer as to his post. And in recent time, we also saw the police inviting the former Secretary General of the United Party, Mo Ali. He was also accused of uh, placing false who. I mean, all of these allegations are in line to the post of uh, Philip Bebram who statement and up to current we have not heard as to whether the police has invited him you, know, you know to to, Thank you. to answer to this allegation. So yeah, yeah so, I was um, to that. Like Philip Red Brown said, he was predicted. Predation are not facts. You just made mention about Jethro Kiss. Jenny Jethro Kiss, Jethro took a, a picture of somebody who they have done a post-mortem examination on that body and he posted the body insinuating that it was the body of the girl 
that was involved. So that was total, total all of all. It was a deception. We call him, he did not deny. He said yes. He even apologized for the law to take a quote and we have to prosecute him. We're not prosecuting him because he was from any sector or any side or any party. We're prosecuting him because he was creating fear, pandemonium in the community. Because it was all around us, there was regionalistic killing all over Nigeria, and we wanted to have convinced people, yes, regionalistic killing all over Nigeria, so he could say that picture that was not even from Nigeria. And when he was caught, he said he was sorry, he even apologized to the family, but we had to prosecute him. Thank you. So, Afabe? Yes. <clears throat> oh, Follow up, Melissa, to my original question about this. Ugandan. And after Fabian will take the final question. Where is he being investigated? Is he being investigated in Riverchi County? or? being in investigated by joint security. Where? Everywhere in the country, the joint security exists. Okay. We, the judge is really yeah, operating for the 3,000 square miles so we can use in the end of our post to investigate. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yes, our uh, judge will do yeah. that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, how are you talking about uh, emphasizing on electoral violence? And I would love, love to be specific. A recently, recently uh, a terrible incident occurred at the Japanese rural area. And that incident uh, was, I mean, was actually occurred between supporters believed to come from the CDC and ACOP. Uh, we saw some libraries were banned, treated. <coughs> Do we have any record from that? And if it has, if we did any investigation, where I mean, what's the conclusion of the investigation? And lastly, are you talking about um, uh, asking political parties to stop, you know, announcing uh, the election results? Um, clearly, you have been seen that uh, the CDC. And the United Party have been doing this over the time. So, what has been your stand? And as we go for the runoff on Tuesday, uh, if you notice any political party doing this, what will be the consequence that you will do? Well, you have to draw a line between election or electoral violation and what will amount to a crime. I take note of the fact that I think school started announcing results before anybody else. Mm -hmm. Probably you also need to uh, examine yourself uh, so that next time you know you will be helpful, you will take the lead in telling people do not announce early results. Uh, with respect to what occurred on the freeway, it is still being investigated. There are several incidents around the country that are being investigated. That's why the law provides for what we call statute of limitation. Sometimes you have three years to bring action. So people should not believe that because we do not charge and take you to court before the election, investigation will not continue after the election. Once it is a crime, even those who registered twice, we have the list from the NEC, they are being investigated, they are being pursued. It is difficult because uh, addresses are not given, whom addresses are not given, but we are finding them, we are pursuing them. So we have a very long period. And we are continuing the investigation relative to what occurred on the freeway. As you are aware, the uh, gentleman who was viciously attacked was removed by us and taken to the doctor. We, as uh, Joint Security and the Governor of Liberia, uh, uh, honor wrote uh, the medical uh, expenses and we uh, have resettled him with his family. We are checking his progress and we are pleased that uh, he is. Uh, coming on uh, properly. So this is the guy photo. You can see uh, after, because it was rumored that he was killed. It was rumored that he got killed during the fracas, but he was treated by the government and he was really not that way. People, this is a 
a photo after the incident. Okay, three days ago. This is three days ago. Yeah, the photo is just three days ago. So we are still working with them in order to ensure that those who perpetrated the act did brought to justice. So at this juncture, I want to say thank you to all of you for your questions and attendance. We hope to talk to you another time. Thank you so much. Well, viewers, I uh, want to say thank you for joining us today uh, through this medium here at the LMP headquarters. Thank you for joining us through this press conference that was being uh, addressed by the Minister of Justice, John Fayyum Musati. To greet you on a one date of an incident that occurred at the United Party headquarters on Doyle Street in Morovia. We also be giving all of police updates. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the press and those of you following us via the social media, to the press briefing will be addressed yeah. to police for person, person of our age, Moses Carter Sim, Deputy Commissioner Police. Chief, you are welcome. Well, thank you so much, uh, Sharp, for the introduction. Let me say to all of you members of the press, Welcome to the headquarters of the Liberia National Police. As usual, we uh, invite you to update you on happenings so that uh, it avoids you speculating and leaving the public uh, in some state of uh, speculations. So the essence of our calling you is to brief you on the incident that happened yesterday evening at the headquarters of the Unity Party in Central Monrovia. Briefing you today, uh, I am Moses Carter, spokesperson of the police, and I have on my far right uh, Deputy Commissioner of Police, John Saar, our head of public safety. Of, of course, on my far left, I've been one of the seizing traffic investigators uh, in person of Assistant Commissioner of Police, Fred Gay. So we're here to basically provide you update on the incident that took place at the headquarters of the Unity Party in Central Monrovia. Once again, we say to you members of the press, you are highly welcome. The Liberia National Police has launched an investigation into a tragic incident that occurred at the headquarters of the Unity Party of Broad Street, Central Monrovia, leaving 25 persons injured. The incident, which took place about 10 p.m. yesterday evening, November 20, has now reported three deaths. Of those three deaths, two males, one female, as confirmed by medical doctors at the John F. Kennedy Medical Center. Police investigation established the cause of the incident was due to a vehicle operator running into some supporters of the Unity Party who were celebrating victory at their headquarters. The operator, alleged suspect Lawrence K. Williams, a resident of Dupont Road Flower Path community has been arrested and is undergoing investigation here at the headquarters of the Liberia National Police. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, out of the total injuries of 25 persons as announced to you, three are confirmed dead, dead while 25 persons comprises six females and 19 males are undergoing treatment at both the John F. Kennedy Medical Center and the Mawa Clinic in Vital. The public can be assured that this investigation will reach a logical conclusion where justice will be served. The leadership of the Joint Security extends its deepest sympathy to the bereaved families 
of those that unfortunately lost their lives and keeps in prayer those of our citizens that are undergoing treatment. I once again want to say to you, thank you for coming. At this juncture, we entertain your questions and your questions will be answered jointly by the team that sits on this table. Thank you so very much. Okay. Alan? Yes, my name is Alan Wozi and I work for the Daily Observer newspaper. Uh, while your investigation is ongoing, I'm our opponent, former finance minister, posted on his social media page indicating that former police director and former 102 investigated the alleged perpetrator and found out that the situation is complete accident and nothing beyond that. What does that mean for your investigation? You have to rephrase that question. Former what? Former what? Police director, Gregory Kumar, and that was former World War II, A.B. Kumar. According to Amara Kone, right. that those people investigated the alleged uh, uh, perpetrator, and then they found out that the situation is just incident and nothing beyond that. What does that mean for your investigation? Incident. Accident. The accident, I mean. Accident and nothing beyond that. Yes. However, I should like to stick to you, uh, Avin, that the team that sits here, 116, Chief of Public Safety, 118, Chief of Traffic, are clothed with the responsibilities of conducting traffic investigations. What we call you to give you today is nothing but what we have found out, and we'll continue to provide you updates. Uh, whoever that has established any other information, if they have any useful information, it will be useful to these individuals so that it helps us with this investigation. Thank you so yes, much. Yes, I just, I just, yeah. I want so to I will add, ask more sex to come. I want to add to uh, the response to you. We are not aware of anyone doing other investigation other than the police station. Right. Uh, I think uh, all of the investigation is supposed to be done here. And we don't know whether there's another uh, accident investigation unit somewhere else, but I'm sure it is here that that work is being carried out. And then we inform you the due course of the result. Thank you so much. Okay, Imara Mopolo. Thank you. My name is Imara Mopolo and I recover Skyven. Prior to your 2010 election, there were you know, saga in Lofa County. You assure the public that you're going to give concrete details for your investigation. Up to nine, the election has finished. We have not gotten due to And then this one coming just after the announcement of the final result. What is the assurance that the public will get that you will get concrete details about all of this thing happening? Thank you. It's a good question. However, I'm sure you follow the, the you, you cover the police regularly. You are here for our regular press briefings. Uh, the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Republic of Liberia, in his most recent press conference, provided update on the Lofa situation that individuals, perpetrators, were charged to court for various crimes. So if you haven't heard that, it's important to know that perpetrators were charged to court. And I, as I show you with this situation, justice will be served. Okay, Fabian. <clears throat> My name is Fabian. We are in a report for State Radio. Prior to the incident, the suspect in question, Lawrence Walker, had his Facebook page already active. But uh, during the incident last night, when it was alleged that uh, he actually committed the incident, his page, page was deactivated. Can you actually speak to that security wise? Well, um, our investigation covers every useful information that is available in ensuring that we get to the bottom of this matter. So whether a Facebook page is active or not active, we use every means available uh, to extract useful information that will lead us to a logical conclusion of this investigation. Yeah, Chukon. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. My name is Chukon Flama and I report for Spoon FM and TV. I am concerned the vehicle that was used uh, during the incident, uh, the vehicle was uh, set at least. I don't know whether you were able to arrest anybody uh, for setting the vehicle at place in a link. And secondly, there are reports that uh, there were three occupants of the vehicle during the commission of uh, crime. I don't know what it is. So at this juncture, I will, I will refer your question to the Chief of Public Safety and he will be buttressed by uh, Chief of Traffic. Well, uh, the investigation is ongoing, as I would say, and this is just a briefing. 
So we found out as to whether somebody, <clears throat> somebody put the car ablaze or it was caught by itself or whether the owner who is the driver or another party had it on fire, we can't say that now. But the investigation will tell us in due course. Okay, sir. So let's let us let us have a, a buttress up from the chief of traffic. Uh, <clears throat> our accident scenes are considered crime scene and proven otherwise. We are working closely with the crime services department to establish all the facts linking to said matter. Investigation is on board. So we take other questions. Yes. Yeah. I'm Junkie Morris of Caravan at Money Life. Uh, my question has to do with the vehicle that uh, was involved with the accident uh, got burned. So on that basis, uh, once it is an accident, we expect a forensic investigation and the vehicle should also serve uh, in that uh, capacity in terms of extracting uh, information from the vehicle as to whether uh, it was an organized crime, whether it was a terrorist attack, all of those things. And the vehicle is burned. Uh, don't you think those questions that uh, burn the vehicle also need to be investigated because I think it tempered with the evidence that you should be extracting. So like uh, the chief of traffic and the chief of public safety just mentioned to you, this is an ongoing investigation. Today is just a matter of, as a matter of fact, you saw that we released a statement yesterday, late evening. Uh, even some of the figures as announced were amended uh, because, you know, when people are being treated, uh, there are, there are times developments unfold, right? In terms of, you know, uh, casualties. So it's an ongoing investigation. We will continue to brief you accordingly on all of the necessary, you know, steps of the investigation or objects of the investigation. So we, we ask your patience uh, as we, as our officers undergo this investigation. All right, Okay, my name is Carmen Lomo. I work for the News Public Trust. I would like to understand at what time this alleged suspect of being arrested. I know from the accident scene, they had missed a count there in the public. Some people say that he ran in other places of the accident. Had there been anything established surrounding that? So the chief of traffic will respond to that. When the accident occurred, we, spoke, we have spoken to the operator. The operator confirmed or uh, revealed that. After the accident, due to fear, he left the accident scene and went to a house. And he was later arrested at his residence in Dupo Road, Flower Park, where he was transferred to Central Headquarters. Oh, his here. Uh, he was arrested by 11 Teddy at his residence. And the accident occurred on Broad Street at about 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. So a uh, few hours in that vault. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, let's take more questions. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, oh, what's it? No, okay, okay. Yeah, quiet. Yeah, I'm the Domingo, I report for the People's News Online. Uh, this job in question that committed the uh, accident that took away the life of Nigerians, is he in the election drama? Uh, uh, investigation ongoing. Investigation ongoing. We have been asked that question, but we are not seeing his license yet, but he to us is a license job. So probably within that 24 hours, if the license is not brought forth by law, it will be declared by our license. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. My name is Carson Man and I report for Chara TV. Uh, when the incident occurred last evening, we heard that allegedly it was masterminded by a city mayor of Monrovia, Mayor Kochi. Have you got any information from the suspects in relation to so like we, we keep saying, this is an ongoing investigation. Uh, it's obvious that you will hear a lot of names being called or a lot of information spilled out to the public. It's for us as an investigative arm to be able to go beyond what is heard to investigate and, and establish the facts. Okay. Let's conclude. Okay, my name is Benjamin Boyd Johnson. I'm a co-operator. During the electoral process, there are several violence and uh, 
you have to visit in a few minutes. Oh, my Lord, have no way. Last one, the latest was in Canada. When uh, the president was using the Ghana to graduate the company, there are some protesters or who involved uh, attacking people. Are those people that currently on investigation because we are here to see? So, 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 like I will keep saying, in the latest press conference as presented by the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, that same question was raised and he answered that question in affirmative of the fact that we produce reports to those incidents. However, investigations are not instantaneous. They are processes. So we ask for the cooperation of the public and the patience of the public as our investigators go on with this with these investigations. Thank you very much. We appreciate the media for honoring our invitation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, sir, hello. Uh, we have the suspect here, some of you that want to talk to him. Well, yeah. 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 No, 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 no. Where are you from there? Go here. Remember where you are. Remember where you are. Remember where you are. I'm going to go. 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 I'm going to Tell us what exactly happened last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I received a call to help help my spiritual father. The big cousin. It was a marathon, and uh, the big has been packed. Wow, this one is a test drive of the big. And uh, when I talked to the vehicle there, I met him at the Clarence store. We drove him towards the market. I picked him up with another guy, which is who happened to be his spiritual son, along with the speakers and uh, some other uh, 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 equipment. To so when I dropped those stuff to Brooklyn, I decided to return. On my way back, the vehicle was empty, so I decided to help few individuals to bring them to town. So on my way to town, I dropped some of them on Brooklyn, Brian Johnson, other Mecklen, and uh, the last person up, up to upper to town. So when I did a U-turn, my fiance sent me a message concerning. Okay, that I didn't get something for the child. So in that instant, the police call came in, so I tried to pack the car and call. When I call, after doing the calling, I dropped the phone. After dropping the phone, the about to start the car. When I start the car, because the car was already in park, it's an automatic, it's, it's already in park. So when I started the car, Just complete the story. Gentlemen, open up. Open up. Gentlemen, open up. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you for joining us today. We are here at the MP headquarters in the central office.